Trump giveth and taketh away. Because um, the Republicans, I think they've realized that he's an idiot, but they're really, really impressed with how idiotic he is. Um, <laughs> Donald Trump apparently was freelancing when he had his uh, allied pack run ads against Dean Heller in Nevada. <laughs> Dean Heller is the most vulnerable Senate Republican. <laughs> I haven't heard anybody make this argument, but I'm not convinced that there might not be some in the, um, the White House who are starting to realize, like, hey, wait a second. We're getting used <laughs> to provide cover for some really unpopular legislation. Maybe it would be a good thing if the Republicans didn't have control of the Senate. Because there's really not a lot of argument as to we're gonna throw all our weight against the weakest person in the Republican Senate caucus. Look, they have two votes to waste. Those are the ones that you give to the people who need to be protected. Dean Heller would be that guy. They, of course, want him to vote for it. And if he was to vote for it, that would bring everybody else along. But uh, the go after so the weakest, right, go after the weakest in the herd doesn't always work, particularly if you don't coordinate that with the guy who's trying to wrangle the herd. In this case, it's Mitch McConnell. Got it. Attack Dean. So they all head, o head over to the White House yesterday. And the way the media was sold this is that Donald Trump is a closer. <laughs> this is what he's all about. <laughs> they call him the closer. Mariana Rivera. Yeah, bring me in. It's time for me to come in from the... Um, <laughs> bring me out from the bullpen. From the bullpen. I got it. <laughs> so You want me to be in the first baseman again? Republicans were saying, we're going over to the White House for a good old shellacking. On the way there, Mr. McConnell, who kept the president at a polite arm's length while he oversaw negotiations of the bill, asked Mr. Trump to arrange the meeting with all 52 Republican senators during a morning phone call, in part to show senators the White House was fully engaged. This is from the New York Times. It's according to people with knowledge of the call. When asked by reporters clustered on the blacktop outside the West Wing if Mr. Trump had command of the details of the negotiations, <laughs> Mr. McConnell ignored the question and smiled blandly. <laughs> Mr. Trump is fond of telling friends he is a quote-unquote closer <laughs> and became more involved over the past few days, reaching out to a few reluctant conservatives like Senators Mike Lee, Utah, and Lion Ted Cruz of Texas. Rand Paul of Kentucky. Over the weekend, Mr. McCall made clear his unhappiness to the White House after a super PAC aligned with Mr. Trump started a campaign against Senator Dean Heller. So everybody walks over to the White House getting ready to get a speech that is both a carrot and a stick going over to the Gipper, going over to the, <laughs> he's going to fire us up, but also keep us in line. And this is how strong Donald Trump was when he came out yesterday. We're going to talk and we're going to see what we can do. We're getting very close, but for the country, we have to have health care. And it can't be Obamacare, which is melting down. Uh, the other side is saying all sorts of things before they even knew what the bill was. This will be great if we get it done. And if we don't get it done, it's just going to be something that we're not going to like. And that's okay. And I understand that very well. What? <laughs> He's still intuits that you know, it's unpopular. It's like, you know, if, if, it's, if we don't get it, it's, okay, what are you going to do? So I hope I uh, put the fear of God into everybody. <laughs> But don't you think that's his sense of self? Like, the the agreement between them on some level that, like, we'll cover for you and your criminal enterprise and you sign our social Darwinist agenda. And he's with it. But at some level, he still kind of is like, 
Sixteen percent approval rating. Ooh, that doesn't look great. Uh, like, I mean, you know, he must have a, not any moral concern, but a public. He understands some popular. I think he's just a little bit confused because, according to I'm the reporting confused. I've seen, um, <laughs> listen to the end of this piece in the New York Times. Till Tuesday's meeting with the White House, Mr. Trump had spoken with only a few members of the Senate, according to an administration official. The pace was nothing like the dozens of calls he made to help pass the House health bill. I think he's just getting... T- I'm, I'm, so, tired. I'm so tired. <sighs> a it's senator hard. who supports the bill left the meeting at the White House with a sense that the president did not have a grasp of some of the basic elements of the Senate plan. Oh, my God. Slender. And it seemed especially confused... When a moderate Republican complained that opponents of the bill would cast it as a massive tax break for the wealthy. This is according to an aide who uh, received a detailed readout of the exchange. Now, understand. Not only is this a massive tax cut for the wealthy, there is a retroactive capital gains tax cut in this. Let me explain to you what that means. The capital gains tax is a tax that favors wealth over labor. If you work for $10, your tax rate will be higher on that $10 than on than on it would be if you made that $10 in the stock market or if you sold your house or if you sold a building, or if you took shares out of your company. The idea behind that, which I think is um, dubious at best, is that, well, we're going to encourage wealthy people to invest because their returns are going to be so much higher because they're not going to have to pay that tax. And that's going to trickle down, and there'll be like uh, gold will fall upon us. It'll like roll, rain on us. It'd be like a shower of gold on you. And really? Yes. <laughs> so the idea that you would do retroactive, that you would give people tax cuts on money that they've already paid taxes on <laughs> early in the year, that money they've already invested, when this is supposed to be something to encourage you to invest in the future, is, is absurd. It's somewhat insulting. Apparently, Donald Trump was not aware. I had no idea. Mr. Trump said he planned to tackle tax reform later, ignoring the repeal tax implications, the staff member added. In other words, when the guy said, people are going to think this is a tax cut because it's a huge tax cut. And he said, you just said tax cut. I'm going to do tax cut later. At the end, uh, he tweeted out, I just finished a great meeting with the Republican senators concerning health care. He wrote, they really want to get it right, unlike O'Care, presumably Obamacare. Hi, folks. Sam Cedar here. We still need your help on our Patreon page. YouTube ads have come back, but not nearly as much as we had before. So if you can help us out, any little bit helps. Head over to our Patreon page right at this URL. And you'll help us keep helping you by making videos.